So Agmed made a video on miracles claiming that we have no rational reason to believe in miracles because we always have other explanations besides the miraculous one for any event that we may witness. And then Tool Time made a response saying that this is basically Hume's arguments and that uh, we, we never have rational reasons for believing in miracles. And then Mig Killer jumped in and said that this is sort of begging the question in favor of uh, 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 skepticism against miracles and so forth. And it's been an interesting discussion. I hope everyone here has been following it. But everyone involved in this discussion so far seems to have really missed the larger point, which is whether or not there are miracles is irrelevant because the argument of, from miracles in favor of the existence of God is invalid on its face. And so to demonstrate that, let's just grant all the premises for the sake of argument. Uh, I'll, I'll, we'll, we'll take the one that Lee Strobel is most fond of, this idea that you know, we have uh, all these facts that attest to the resurrection of Jesus Christ and so forth. You know, we have the empty tomb and the, the testimony of the prophets and or the, you know, the witnesses, etc. and so forth. And obviously I think a lot of these premises are deeply flawed, but let's grant Strobel all that for the sake of argument. So Jesus died genuinely. He was actually brought back from the dead. How does this prove that God exists? The assumption seems to be that if Jesus was in fact resurrected from the dead, then the only plausible explanation of this is the fact that he is God and that therefore God exists. But really, if you just think about it for a second, you can see that that doesn't make any sense at all. There's all sorts of other alternate explanations. Maybe Satan is just fucking with Lee Strobel. Ever think about that? Maybe Satan really wants... Strobel on all these other Christians to believe in Jesus because he's actually a false prophet. What better way to get people to go to hell than to convince them that someone else actually is the Son of God when in fact that person is not the Son of God? That would be a fantastic trick on the devil's part. Or maybe it's not the devil. Maybe it's some sort of trans-dimensional spiritual being that just happened to be passing by and can violate our laws of physics and biology willy-nilly. They saw Jesus, they dug his style, they decided to make him the beneficiary of their new experimental resurrection technology. I have no idea, but my point is that no one does. You can't go from the fact that Jesus was resurrected, even if you grant that's a fact, to the claim that therefore he was God and he exists. That's just invalid. The night sky could rearrange itself so that the stars spell out, I am God, I am real, believe in me, and that still would not give us a good reason for believing in God. All it would give us a reason for believing is that something really weird is going on. Even if that is in fact a miracle, even if it is a violation of the laws of nature, it is still a leap to believe that God is responsible for that. Now, you might be saying, well, sure, the argument for miracles isn't a deductive proof of the existence of God, doesn't guarantee the existence of God, but surely it gives us a good reason to believe in the existence of God. No, it's a strong inductive argument, is it not? No, it's not. The very nature of miracles is that they're so bizarre that no one is in any position at all to judge what is the best explanation for them. So, indeed, it may be God, or it may be the devil, or it may be something else entirely. But no one can claim to be in a position to look at a genuine miracle and assess and say, that is best explained by appealing to God. So in sum, the problem is not just that for any alleged miracle, there are more plausible, non-miraculous explanations for it. The problem is, furthermore, that even if you have a genuine miracle, that is not sufficient for concluding that therefore God exists, much less that a particular God exists. There are other miraculous but non-theistic explanations for any given miracle, even assuming that it is, in fact, a miracle. Which, of course, it is not. A while back, I made a video called Miracles Prove Nothing. The central argument of that video was that even if we grant for the sake of argument that miracles actually happen, that does nothing to prove that God exists. I got a lot of critical feedback on that video, which is great because I, I love criticism, but two objections came up over and over again, both of which seemed frankly rather shallow. Now, normally I'd ignore them for that reason, but because I got the same objection so many times, I thought I might as well respond. To briefly reiterate my arguments, take any set of miracles you like. Say, all the miracles of Jesus, including the resurrection. I'll, I'll just refer to the resurrection to keep it simple. Uh, those miracles do not give us a good reason to believe in God, I argued, because there's an infinite variety of other possible explanations besides God done it. I proposed a number of off-the-cuff alternative explanations. 
UFOs, transdimensional beings, or, to paraphrase myself, maybe Satan is just fucking with us. Now, wouldn't that truly prove Kaiser Soze wrong? Wouldn't the greatest trick the devil ever pulled actually have been convincing the world that God exists? The first response was, well, if Satan exists, then God must exist too. Now, I'm not sure if I should blame myself for being too specific, or my critics for their failure of imagination. I was not using the word Satan as a name to refer to the biblical character, but rather as a title to refer to a supernatural force bent on the deception and corruption of humanity. Just as the word God can refer to more than just Yahweh, but any variety of divine entities, I was taking Satan as a generic catch-all for all variety of evil supernatural beings. While there's obviously been a long Manichaean connection in various religious traditions between gods and devils, there's no necessary logical connection between them. Now, granted, I was pretty sloppy on presentation, and I sh probably should have spelled that out a little bit more, but frankly, I thought it was kind of obvious given the, given the context of the video. Alright, the next response was to invoke an inference to the best explanation argument. Sure, there are other possible explanations for the resurrection of Christ, but the best explanation is that he really was the Son of God. After all, it's possible that things fall to the ground because invisible green gnomes push them to the earth, but that's not a very good explanation, whereas Einstein's theory of general relativity is a much better explanation. My skepticism, taken to its extreme, would rule out not just miraculous explanation, the argument goes, but all explanations. Now, to see why this argument fails, we have to take a closer look at the inference to the best explanation argument and see how it works. Now, one standard problem with inference to the best explanation is that in order for it to be of any worth, we have to have at least some reason for thinking that there is at least one good explanation in our set of possible explanations. Uh, the best explanation of a bunch of crappy explanations is still going to be a very poor explanation. But let's uh, set that aside for the time being. Um, the really thing I want to focus on is something deeper about these specific examples being given. So let's take miracles and set them aside and just talk about how explanation works in the nat context of the natural world. Let's imagine that we are going for a walk and we encounter something that neither of us have ever seen before. Let's say it's the Aurora Borealis. And just assume for the sake of the story here that you've never seen it, neither have I, we've never heard about it, we've never heard it described, we know absolutely nothing. It's a completely alien, foreign experience. We have no idea how the fuck something like this could possibly happen. Now, if this was the case, how would we react? Now, of course, we'd be stunned by the beauty. Aurora Borealis is tremendously beautiful. But we would also, of course, want an explanation. What the heck is this thing? Now, because I want to leave aside the supernatural, neither of us says it's a miracle. We, we try to think of possible uh, naturalistic explanations. Uh, you say, for example, maybe it's uh, frozen ice crystals falling from the sky, refracting the light of the moon. Uh, by contrast, I say that solar radiation is being pulled in by the Earth's magnetic pole. Now, given what we know, and what we don't know, which of these two explanations is the best explanation? Answer? Neither. You and I are in no position, given our total inexperience with this phenomena, to be in any position whatsoever to make any kind of determination about how to explain this thing. This is true in spite of the fact that my explanation, that is, solar radiation being pulled in by the Earth's magnetic pole, happens to be true. The fact that it's true is irrelevant since it was a stone-cold guess on my part. We can't say which of these explanations is the best explanation until we take a much closer look at the Aurora Borealis, until we put it under the microscope, so to speak. Once we study it, once we find out, for example, whether or not there are ice crystals in the atmosphere, um, th then we can start to rule out other explanations and start leaning towards one over another. Now, what does this thought experiment with the Aurora Borealis tell us about inference to the best explanation and how it applies, or rather fails to apply, to the resurrection of Jesus, or, or any other miracle for that matter? In order to determine whether or not God done it is the best explanation of a miracle, what would we have to do? Well, we'd have to study it. We'd have to consider other possible explanations, figure out under what conditions those explanations could be deemed unlikely and rule them out. We'd have to examine the scope of possible explanations, see which one of them offers us a good theoretical grasp of the phenomena, which of them accords best with our general understanding of related phenomena, which of them allows us to make successful predictions of future events, which allows us to understand previously unexplained events, 
which, is, which allows us to exercise control over previously uncontrollable situations, and so forth. These are the standards by which we evaluate explanations, distinguishing good explanations from bad ones. In short, a good explanation is one that takes something that we don't understand and puts it in terms of something that we do understand. And miracles, by their very nature, do not and cannot avail themselves of this kind of analysis. They are sui generis, idiosyncratic, completely detached from any sort of regular comprehensible framework such that the very notion of a miracle is, for all practical purposes, something that's inexplicable. Theists like to think that they can explain miracles because they believe they do have a cognitive grasp on a framework that makes sense of these supernatural events. The Bible. After all, if what the Bible says is true, and we've got good reason for thinking this to be the case, then that provides us with an excellent framework for explaining miracles. But to argue in this manner is, of course, to beg the question. You cannot appeal to the Bible as a framework for understanding miracles without first establishing the general reliability of the Bible, especially as pertains to the supernatural claims that it makes. But that is the very thing under contention here. So to sum up, not everything that looks like an explanation actually is an explanation. God is only the best explanation of the resurrection of Christ if we assume we have a good grasp on God's mind, his intention, and his purposes. But the only way we could have such a grasp would be if we assume at the outset that God exists and that the Bible is an accurate depiction of him. Absent this question-begging assumption, God done it is not an explanation at all. You don't explain a miracle by invoking a mystery.